In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are defender of the poor. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are refuge of the weak. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are hope of sinners. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me, your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be counted or numbered. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, 
nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he has also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestines, he also, call, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm a fan of the Antiques Roadshow on public television. Some people clearly know the item they are bringing to be priced, valued, and some, which I find the most fascinating, have no idea what they have. They have no idea how expensive and valuable the treasure they have. It might be a value of thousands and thousands of dollars. This ordinary person has a possession that brings joy or comfort to them. Then they find out that others will pay a large sum of money for the joy and comfort of owning that for themselves. Jesus has a different treasure for us that we all can possess, we all can have. We can all be part of his kingdom. He informs us we need to look for the hidden treasures that he has given to us and find them in this world to be ready to find them fully in the world to come. I have found his profound gifts many times. Sometimes I haven't dug far enough to find them fully. Sometimes I did not accept the treasures that God offered me, but I humbly present some of them to you, and some of them are quite simple. I am forever surprised by the great joy that I get from children simply playing together or to just simply talk to children. There's a little girl that lives across the street from me. She just turned four years old. She's run the wheels off of her first push scooter, and now she's on her second one. She wore out that first one because she's always on it, going from here to there and everywhere she can go. And I giggle when her mother has to remind her that she's going too far down the sidewalk and needs to come back. And I see her look over her shoulder to see how much she can get by with. There's something holy about a child pushing the boundaries and the holiness of the mother who has to state the rules over and over like God has to do for us. If we do not stop and reflect, we miss the treasure of such a holy moment that reveals the presence of God. Jesus let me know when I was about 12 years old that I was supposed to be a priest. He wanted me. Jesus put that treasure chest in front of me. At first, I would not go near that treasure chest. Jesus persisted with gentle reminders at the beginning and several nights of mysterious hard pushes until I told him that I would go to the seminary until they would send me home. In other words, kick me out. That was 40 years ago. The promises of Jesus are usually not immediate, but he puts that treasure chest in front of us. He promises that he will give it to us, but we must be patient. Whether we are looking at a little mustard seed and saying, is that all? Or seeking to dig a hole to find that treasure chest. Usually the treasure takes some time to find and to reveal it, and for it to reveal itself. The treasure may seem tiny and insignificant, but the experience of digging to find the treasure is is itself part of the treasure. The path to Jesus is mysterious and treacherous, 
but it's a path to the greatest treasure ever. And yet it is a holy trek that we take, and the prize will bring us much contentment. I humbly say, because I'm not a married person, that I believe marriages are probably this way. You have to get through the floods and the droughts, and the difficult journey brings treasure that is found in perseverance, and the true love is often buried deeply in our ignorance or need to understand and communicate with the other, or the need to be patient and forgiving. Once we dig through that dirt, we find the treasure of Jesus. In fact, we find Jesus in the digging, and we find that he always brings us treasure. And that greatest treasure is himself. Most of us know days when we're trying to get the bills paid, trying to heal relationships after poor words were chosen in heated conversation. Most of us know the love of people who forgive us for the poor choices we make. We find ourselves foolishly being selfish and unaware of the other person. It is a profound treasure to find people who love us in our weakness and accept us anyway. It's a profound treasure to humbly learn better ways to love others and to humbly seek forgiveness from other people. There are many times I sit with people nearing the end of their lives and they're hoping to find the greatest treasure on the other side of death. Many talk about their triumphs and failures in their relationships as they're approaching death. Many are trying to make it right. They try to make right what were perceived harms that they have committed. They've lost much of their power of controlling their own life. And I'm coming to find out that life is letting go of any kind of control. It's just not there. You have to accept the treasure of Jesus Christ who will take you across the goal line and will be the greatest treasure because we ultimately don't have very much control of things. And you can see that just in trying to get to church and receive communion. People who are dying are free from trying to take control of many of the aspects of their lives. They go through the process of giving up and placing themselves in the arms of God. I've learned a lot from them, but still want to squeeze control of my own life for myself, rather than surrendering to the vocation of loving God and loving his people and not trying to take control. <coughs> Excuse me. The challenge of Jesus today is to discover how God is sustaining you, how he's challenging you to give up your program of life that you have for yourself and accepting his life of grace and love. When you pray, reflect upon the treasures God has given you. You may have spent most of your life digging for this treasure in apathy or sin or disappointment. May we all keep digging in prayer for possessing the treasure of God in his son Jesus Christ allows us to drop everything and sell everything and turn our whole being over to the God who saves us. The treasure is before you. Go find it, dig for it, whatever you need to do. For he is our God who loves us greatly and will give us everlasting life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Trusting in the Lord who told Solomon, ask something of me and I will give it to you. We now call to mind our needs and the needs of our neighbors around the world and address them to our generous and caring God. For the church that we may realize the treasure of God's presence buried in each person we meet and live our lives in the joy of that knowledge, we pray to the Lord. For political leaders that they may govern the vast and diverse people in their care with wise and understanding hearts, we pray to the Lord. For those facing or recovering from droughts or floods, from violent weather or rising sea levels, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an awareness of the preciousness of life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That we might grow in wisdom and understanding and use these gifts to continue building up the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. For those who suffer from the coronavirus, those who have died, those who are sick, for their families, and for all who are frightened, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all the prayers we hold this day in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord Generous God, you formed us in your own image, showered us with your love, and granted us your forgiveness, treasures beyond compare. Help us to share these gifts with one another, forming, loving, and forgiving others as we do ourselves. Grant this and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the power working, through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through this paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories. Without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, O oh, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Amen. Let's offer a prayer for Joe Fouts, who died a, a day or so ago. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. 